Uh, important case in the Supreme Court today, which we should uh, talk about. There have been news of reports, allegations, and in-depth investigations, which have revealed that possibly some Indian citizens, including uh, journalists, activists, etc., may have been spied upon using the Pegasus software, which essentially infiltrates your phone to get all of your information. Now, the Israeli company that makes this uh, spyware or this software says it sells only to sovereign entities, that means governments. And the question that these activists have been raising for some time now is then, who was the person or who was the entity who had access to the spyware, who could have used it against them? They point fingers at the current Indian government. The government has denied these allegations and all of these uh, activists and a clutch of them went to the Supreme Court asking for a fair inquiry into this. The Supreme Court today has constitu constituted a committee which will look into these allegations. My colleague Abhimanyu has more details. The Supreme Court had earlier indicated that it was facing problems in finding people for the committee to probe Pegasus reports since various people had recused due to personal reasons. Center was asked not to beat around the bush and clarify its stand on whether the software was used or not. The court had observed that even if a committee is made to probe its report, may have to come out in the public domain. The court had made it clear that it was not interested in knowing the government's action to protect law and order and security. However, the union government had maintained that all actions which have been taken by the centre is only as per the prevailing statutory regime in India as per the IT Act and the Telegraph Act. The union government had indicated that they wanted to constitute an independent panel of domain experts to probe the issue and had offered the court to nominate various members. However, Center had made it clear that it cannot divulge any information on the used softwares in view of larger national interest and security. The petitioners, meanwhile, had maintained that when the German government can admit using the software, why can't India? Petitioners had maintained that state cannot behave like an adversary and target citizens by illegal use of software, claiming that Pegasus not just spies but also implants false information in phones and devices and violates Indian law. All right, what are the implications of this very, very crucial decision by the Supreme Court? Apar Gupta of the Internet Freedom Foundation is with me on the show today. Karuna Nandi, Advocate, Supreme Court of India, is speaking with us, as is Arvind Gupta, Head of Digital India Foundation. Welcome to all of you. Apar, let me begin by getting your take. Um, Many are celebrating the fact that a committee will look into this, but uh, also looking at the larger takeaway of how the concept of privacy of citizens has been upheld. You think that's also very crucial? I think while there's a cause for celebration, others are also signaling some sense of cynicism. And it's important for us to uh, note the larger environment because there's some questions which are being raised repeatedly with respect to institutional independence. And this has been noted by Justice Ramanna, the Chief Justice itself. For instance, in recent remarks, he stated, quote, a lot of discussion is there about pressure from the executive. It is also imperative to start a discourse how social media trends are impacting the judiciary, end of quote. So more or less, there's a large level of uh, a larger environment about how the court is dealing with cases which may impact the uh, union executive in terms of the political uh, political steps it takes and kind of can have repercussions. In this respect, I think so, this order needs to be signaled as indicating a sense of hope and remedy because there has been no institutional uh, recognition of the of the of the claims made due to these Pegasus revelations, where the statements which have been made principally by the union government um, through the cabinet ministers have been on the floor of the parliament, have been towards uh, stating that, uh, well, uh, these disclosures don't actually constitute any reason for constituting an inquiry. So I would say this is a good second step. The first step was the hearing, which, uh, which was uh, opened up by the court. The second step is this committee, but further steps remain. 
the committee, how it operates, the terms of reference, and can it summon government witnesses? How is that cooperation? The report which is given to the government, uh, to the court, and ultimately what steps the court makes with respect to the revelations or the kind of report, the factual submissions, the recommendations made by it, which places accountability. So I think we are uh, premature to celebrate uh, in respect of this judgment, but it signals hope that there'll be some kind of institutional response which will follow subsequently. You know, one of the things uh, that the judges said was that the state cannot get a free pass every time by raising national security concerns. No omnibus prohibition can be called against judicial review. Karuna Nandi, do you think that that's at the crux of the matter? Because that's the eternal debate, isn't it? National security versus privacy of individuals. I think that's exactly right. And the order says so quite clearly. I'm, I think, a lot more celebratory of this order than, uh, uh, than others because of what had come before it. Um, without the state giving even an, ad, you know, a, in this face of the state's non-response, many benches would have just adjourned the matter. But unfortunately, this filibustering has been a feature of some of the most important cases of our time. And in the face of a government that fails to abide by constitutionality and cites national security repeatedly, even when it's blatantly a case of um, somebody constitutional under Article 191A. You have a number of cases where the UAPA is just cited um, with impunity. And particular sections are merely cited in the documentation, thereby at times binding judges from, uh, uh, from the district courts and uh, from, you know, from lower courts, but also at times intimidating such judges. So I think that even though we must remember we're in a jurisdiction where obiter actually binds the lower courts. And when they are saying that the specter of national security should not um, you know, just make us throw up our hands in despair and they have taken action, even in the face of the government's non-response and filibustering, that I think is extremely positive. And also the court order is with regard to um, investigating the immediate Pegasus issue, but also if you remember the, the FISA court in the United States, which was looking at foreign surveillance, um, there was a huge scandal that uh, when, when the working of that court was revealed because they approved over 90% of the requests for surveillance that were made to them. The, I mean, I remember the, the, uh, the expose sort of indicated that the prosecuting agency, you know, knew the dog of the judge because they went to the house all the time, right? Um, and I think that having in open court the discussion of what the mechanism should be under law and what legal amendments should be made, I think is, is extremely salutary. Of course, I share I share everyone's um, caution also that we have to see what the result is and the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Yeah. But when you have the Supreme Court recognizing exactly. the Orwellian exactly. nature of what's one. going on now, I think yeah. that is step one. Because here we have the country's premier institution yeah. to uphold fundamental yes. rights saying that what we are going through now is like 1984, uh, the, the book. Big Brother is watching us. Wow. Yes. Yes. Uh, Arvind Gupta, you know, your, your take on um, the implications and the impact of what we've seen today and how important this discussion has become um, in a time when our lives are so available for surveillance. One part of the question is that should there be surveillance and illegal surveillance? Of course not. But the other part is also how available we are for surveillance. I mean, I'm not even going to go into cases recently in the headline where WhatsApp chats make uh, the most, you know, meatiest part of the case against the accused. Um, do you think it's important to set those guidelines now in this case and this particular judgment could be a vehicle for that? 
So, uh, you know, what Apar has said and what Karuna has said, let me um, just add a few things. I think the government had also offered in the court to set up an expert committee. The, uh, the court has done that. And I think that's a welcome thing. Uh, it's, it's a good committee with a lot of experts who have a lot of um, eminence in this, uh, uh, um, in this field. So I think this will, in my opinion, really dispel any doubts uh, being created by any party globally, uh, because I have fundamentally some issues on the whole Pegasus report, but I won't go to that today. But uh, the, the, uh, the, I think an expert committee uh, under the supervision of a, a retired judge will, will really clear whether this was used, if at all, for mass surveillance. I think the government has always um, restricted itself for for um, uh, for for that answer because it cannot give an omnibus answer that whether it uses Pegasus or not because I and that is where I support that it is a a, a national security issue whether our intelligence agencies uses or you know uh, other agencies use it which is which could be the case or could not be the case we don't know the answer to that but the real issue is whether it was used for mass surveillance whether it was used against activists journalists politicians and that's where um, i think if there are any doubt that should be cleared up and that committee uh, this committee will uh, this expert committee uh, will will come forward with its report the second point i do want to make is which is your other issue i think uh, uh, you know, I just, I always say this, uh, I think there is, um, in today's uh, digitally connected world, we have offered ourselves uh, to all the platforms. I mean, we, there is no need for surveillance. We, we ourselves have, with our own consent, or sometimes, of course, it's mostly uninformed consent, um, given all our information willingly to, uh, to a combination of um, uh, applications and platforms. So, um, I think uh, uh, if somebody triangulates on all this data, we, they have enough information about us. Uh, you mentioned WhatsApp, and if you combine WhatsApp, Facebook, uh, you know, um, and the Google services and uh, everything else, uh, yeah. uh, we we actually uh, no, there are true. other people that's who know true, a lot Arvind. more about that's us true. than. But than I, else the question, else. no, this is well known. One one minute, Arvind. Let me let me come in. Let me come in and tell you more clearly the point I'm trying to make. It's true. It's well known that. Right now, it's very easy for anyone to triangulate on information about any one of us because we're digitally connected and everything is available, etc. The question is, does that then make us liable because this is the world we live in? Shouldn't there be a moat, some kind of protection for people's rights? I mean, Pegasus is an extreme case where you infiltrate someone's phone. They don't even know it. It's not like they've offered up that information. They've Absolutely. infiltrated oh, their fine. phone and all of their data. So that's, of course, an extreme case. But... But, but, you know, we deserve to be protected. And national security cannot be a reason why we don't get that protection. That's the key question no, today. And I, 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 I would be the last person to uh, disagree with what you're saying. Uh, I think national security has its own implications and they should be there. If, if I am, unless I am subject to some, um, some, some investigation or an, uh, a target for some reason, there should be no reason for either a platform or anybody else to surveil upon me. As simple as that. That is my right, my space, and um, and uh, and I think this 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 investigation will also prove the same. But let's let's wait for the answers. Um, I think the other thing, uh, again, this is a tangential to today's discussion, so I won't bring it up heavily, is in, India does need its uh, privacy bill to become a uh, law pretty soon. And I think that is, that's a very, very important thing because today what data gets shared, who uses it for what purpose is really not defined. So, but I'll just leave it there um, uh, because it's, this is not the topic that we want to discuss today. It's about privacy, it's about data, it's about the signaling from the courts, as Karuna and Apar were talking about as well. Karuna, let's talk about outcomes. What would you hope to be seen from this committee? I'm not talking about what uh, final you know, decision they will take in their report, but in terms of transparency, in terms of speed, what would you hope to see from here on, now that you're saying step one has been taken? Um. I think that's an important question. But if I may address my friend, Arvind, so I'm, I'm always very interested to hear uh, from him and always it's a, always a pleasure to discuss with him. Um, but I'm in respectful disagreement of some of the points he made. I don't think the point here 
in this particular surveillance mechanism is mass surveillance because the allegation is that it was very specific directed surveillance against very particular victims. And approximately one crore allegedly is what it costs for each victim, right? Um, there are other mechanisms for mass surveillance that haven't had enough judicial scrutiny. CMS, for instance, there's a lot of mass surveillance that is admittedly going on by this government that hasn't had sufficient judicial scrutiny, but this I think is not it. Um, I think when we look at this argument is frequently made that we have voluntarily given up a lot of our data. This is correct. Um, although I would say that these are unfair contract terms and the average user doesn't actually read their terms of service, not only are they long and boring and they're, they're legalistic and nobody has the time, right? Um, that's something that I am working on. It's a project I'm working on, um, more on that later. Um, but, the, but I think the point is different that if you sign a contract and you're giving lots of data to Facebook, that is one issue. If you're giving data to Google and they're alienating it to third parties, that's another issue. Um, that misuse, for example, is being examined by the Competition Commission, right? Um, in from the monopolistic angle. Um, there's an aspect of voluntariness in it. If you are being surveilled, then that's not voluntary, right? That has to be in accordance with some law. Now, given the nature of Pegasus, admittedly, the nature of Pegasus is that it um, does not merely intercept communications, which the government's allowed to do if a particular procedure is followed. Admittedly, it's not, it's, it's uh, overly simple and doesn't have enough judicial oversight. However, what Pegasus does is that it allows the government to hack in your phone, take your data and do things with your phone, which is something that's been um, noted, uh, the allegation has been noted in the order. So I think that is something that is um, not actually allowed. That's something that has been criminalized under the Information Technology Act. And if that is true, to, to come to your point, Tamanna, that um, then I, what I would like to see if that has been done outside of the ambit of what is permissible under the law, then it is criminal, right? And that is, uh, uh, Karuna, and, nobody is disagreeing with what you're saying, at least not me. I think that let that come out. Let that come yes. out of the report. So there this, we are on the same page. Yeah, the, the, we, this has to come out in the report. I mean, uh, what happened exactly and what how what it was done and whether it was used to target uh, a few individuals is what we need to find out. And that, that is, is what which is why, discuss. yeah, which is which is why we now have this committee. Yeah, Absolutely. which is why we have this committee. Let us come last the point on the privacy bill. Of what next? Just what, very what last we, limited point what? on the privacy bill. The privacy bill, everyone, yeah. uh, everyone knows we need a privacy bill. The current privacy bill does not cut it. It's not good enough. You know, so the the cry to I think pass this this privacy bill. Yeah. I think the devil, as always, is in the details. I think we really, really need to strengthen it to we, address we need, the we need, a, that Karuna, we need a starting point because this bill has taken three and a half years to reach the stage where it has reached. Uh, I completely bill. agree with you, but better to have, uh, you know, better to have. Okay, I, you know, let, let me let let, let, let me, Karuna, Karuna Karuna Arvind, let let a par come in. Let Apar come in. He's not raising his voice. It's not fair. He doesn't get a chance. And I also need to wrap up. Apar, I want you to conclude the discussion with the what next uh, sort of point of view. What are you hoping to see now as this committee begins its very, very important task? Uh, I would invite uh, people who are much more open towards reading the judgment, towards looking at paragraph 61 of the judgment, which has the terms of reference. It has two broad points. What the committee can do in terms of inquiring and determining factual determinations. That is what Arvid is saying. The truth should come out, right? And But it also has the wider remit to what Karna is indicating as to is the privacy bill good enough? For instance, it can make recommendations regarding the enactment or amending of existing laws. What should be done to protect citizens? But more importantly, what should be the immediate next steps for this committee? I'm not saying for the court because that's something I can't foresee are three things. The first is the committee has the uh, powers to co-opt members and experts. There are no members of civil society at present. It does have, and is headed by a, a very well-respected judge, Justice Ravindran, but it should bring in experts and co-opt them as members. They should be a part of the committee, civil society. Secondly, it should 
publish in national newspapers, just as the uh, committee set up by the West Bengal government under Justice Madan Loku, inviting submissions by the public, but also more importantly, by the victims of Pegasus by itself, and should indicate clear timelines how it will assess those submissions and then form them on the basis of expert testimony and invite also depositions. The third is it should make this report public because at present there's a high degree of public interest in this existing matter and making the report public also opens it to scrutiny and improves confidence in its determinations, which is then also forwarded to the court. And from there we'll take it forward. I think the court has adjourned this matter for after um, eight weeks, I think so, if I'm not wrong. And let's see where we pick up from there. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much to all of you for giving us the time and taking us uh, through your views on what is something that impacts all of us. Yes, um, the Pegasus spyware scandal and those who are its purported victims are a select set of people. But at the core of this discussion and this issue is the question of our own privacy and whether anyone, even if it's the government, has the right to peer in to your life, your phone, against your will. That's all the time we have on the India Development Debate. We'll take a very short break. We're back with a lot more. Stay tuned.